It is, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be here. It gives me the opportunity to celebrate two great entities that I know and believe in very deeply, the Actors Fund of America and Mike Bloomberg of Medford, Massachusetts and New York City. And while the Actors Fund is actually 60 years older than Mike, both of them have given immeasurable support to show business professionals. The Actors Fund is committed to everyone from actors to opera singers, and so is Mike Bloomberg. He realized in his first day as mayor, when New York was still reeling from the attacks of 9-11, that along with a sense of security and a healthy economy, what needed to be rebuilt in this city was the indomitable creative spirit that defined us. And he did that. Under Mike, New York City became the single largest funder of arts and culture in America. That's a great accomplishment. And it made a big difference. Mike's administration invested billions of dollars in arts organizations, large and small. And they helped build wonderful and innovative spaces to showcase these arts and created the Made in New York media campaign to support local film and television production. And that's one of the reasons why, by the end of Mike's administration, there were a record number of films and television shows being produced in New York, and the number of film and TV jobs in the city had grown by tens of thousands. Those are jobs for actors, carpenters, caterers, and everyone who works to keep the cameras rolling and the curtain calls coming. Of course, Mike has supported arts groups around the city through his personal philanthropy as well. There is no businessman, public servant, or philanthropist more appreciative of the creative mind or more in awe of it. Mike always looks at our experiences a new work of art, or a play, or a film, and wonders, how did that artist ever think of that? And he admires it even when he doesn't like what he's looking at. Mike, you and I share a lot. Love of golf, deep affection for New York City, a Genesis Prize, <laughs> leading man looks, charisma, I mean, you may not be a full-time actor or dancer or theater professional. You may not have the voice of a Brian Stokes Mitchell, but you've been singing a love song to New York for more than 50 years, and that number has always been in tune. And now it's my pleasure to give you something that I do not have. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present the 2015 Actors Fund Medal to Michael R. Bloomberg. Thank you, thank you. Please sit. We have fun doing that, guys? Yeah, I enjoyed it. They all enjoyed it. And I'm gonna learn all your names before I leave tonight. So you stay around afterwards. We're gonna work on this. Anyways, David, Stokes, Katie, um, and kids, thank you for your amazing talent. And uh, I just so hope that someday you can sit out there and be as happy as I was for the last few minutes. It's really a wonderful thing. America's a wonderful country, and we're all so lucky. And uh, we're here because of you guys, really. You're the future. So congratulations and thank you. And I wanted to thank the Actors Fund for this terrific honor. I suppose I should also thank all the teachers of music and theater and dance who even indirectly encouraged me not to go into the fields of music, theater, and dance. And so should you, but who knows, uh, after tonight, maybe I'll be inspired to devote more of my time to my performing career. 
In that earlier video, you saw that cameo I did when I was mayor in the Sex and the City movie. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't make it into the final film because, as I've said before, they wanted more sex and less city. <laughs> well, I'm not mayor anymore, so maybe I can now give the public what they want. And while Michael was up here making fun of me, I was sitting with Diana Taylor and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Who won that battle? <laughs> uh, seriously, I admire the mission and the compassion of the Actors Fund a great deal. Uh, not only do I believe that professional artists are responsible for entertainment and enlightenment, but they are also the essence of what makes our city and our country what it is. Uh, in New York, culture is what makes people want to visit and what makes talented people want to stay. The arts are the reason this city doesn't sleep. After all, who would want to? The arts are also bringing customers to small businesses. They are spearheading economic development. They create jobs and livelihoods for people from all walks of life, and they bring vitality and excitement to our neighborhoods. Take the Actors Fund partnership with the city on a supportive housing development in downtown Brooklyn. And I think it's a perfect example of how the arts community channels its singular creativity and into solving some of the toughest challenges that we face. So thank you all for being here tonight to support the Actors Fund, one of this city's and this country's most venerable and important organizations. I am very honored to receive this medal and to share it with some of my colleagues who deserve a tremendous amount of credit for their support of the arts and the people who really put me on the stage and made me everything I am. That includes Patty Harris, Kate Levin, <laughs> Kathy Oliver, and George Fertitta, the essential players on the team at Bloomberg, uh, Doug Bernstein, and now at, uh, with Bloomberg Philanthropies, uh, get a chance to give a little bit more back and to start as a middle-class kid from Boston in a small town and end up being honored by Michael Douglas and all of these amazing performers on the same night as the great Morgan Freeman is as good as it gets. I have one minor question, which maybe he can answer when Morgan Freeman gets up here to be honored. We before were taking pictures on the step and repeat, and Morgan was wearing sunglasses inside. Justin Bieber was the only other person I know who does that. <laughs> Maybe he can explain it to you. In any case, I may not be the subject of a Broadway musical so far, but I can't help but believe that my life has been, in the words of Brian Stokes Mitchell, an impossible dream. And no, I'm not going to sing it either. I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you all, and you're doing a wonderful thing by being here. This is a great organization. <laughs>